Carolyn, uh, how do you feel now that the story about the Lover's Lane, you go to Adams Park much? Yes, we used to, before this happened. Well, what has happened now? Um, well, before the, the murders take place. But I mean, what, are, are you staying away from the park now? More so than I, <laughs> than I have before. I go there, if I go, I go during the day, you know. So. Not at night? No. Okay, let me, let me ask you a question just once, one more time, just to make sure we've, you know, we've got the whole thing. Tell me how you feel uh, uh, since this uh, story has come to light and what you're doing differently and just generally how you feel about this whole situation. Well, um, I'm staying away from parks, not just Adams Park, you know, because it can happen anywhere. Um, I don't know, like I said before, I feel frightened, you know. And I won't use the facilities that much, you know, until this is over with. Okay. Thank you, Carolyn. I appreciate it. Keep it tough. I got a wild one. Do you, uh, did you know any of the people that were involved in this whole thing? No, but I had some friends, you know, whose friends they were. Uh -huh. So. Do you, do you know where this is? It's just all over the place. People, is it pretty crowded on the on the drives there during in the evenings or on the weekends that type of thing? I mean, is there is there? Ms. West, uh, how do you feel now that this story about the, the Lover's Lane killer has been made public? Uh, does it frighten you? Do you think like this would happen in, in your neighborhood? Mm -mm. No, never. Is this uh, whole thing a, a matter of uh, significant conversation around the neighborhood? Are people talking about it? Yeah, they are. I know I told my mom I was coming out here and she got sort of upset, you know, because she didn't want me coming out here by myself. So they're talking about it. And you're staying away from the park a lot more than you used to? Yeah, especially at night, on cold nights. Yeah. Mr. McCall, how about you? How do you feel about this? I feel it's something that should be feared, but not necessarily un... Uh, I don't think we should exaggerate the fear because it exists in any neighborhood at any time. Are you uh, staying away from the park now any more than you were before? Well, I never frequented the park at night anyway, but I don't feel that there's a danger during the day, and that's when I come. Thanks a lot, both of you. People talking about it a lot, huh? What are they saying, mostly? Um, I mean, are they shocked, or are well, they... Well, one of, one of the girls that was shot was a friend of mine. We graduated together, and when I heard about it, don't Just find don't me out anymore. here. No. <laughs> no. Is, is the park any less crowded during the day now than it, than it was? I don't know, Jimmy, is it? No, it seems to be... People are still coming out in the daytime. But at night, have you have you been through it all? You know, for example, to notice that the, uh, the, the notice the fact that the park.
The people who live around Adams Park in southwest Atlanta are glad that the story about the Lover's Lane killer has come to light. For they, take it again. Take two. The people who live around Adams Park in southwest Atlanta say they're glad that the story about the Lover's Lane killer has finally come to light. They want him captured just as much as the police, if not more. But they're very grateful for this opportunity to know that there is danger in their neighborhood. Take three. The people who live around Charles Adams Park in southwest Atlanta say they're glad that the story about the Lover's Lane killer has finally come to light. They want whoever is responsible captured as much, if not more, than the police do. But they say they are also glad to find out that there are... Take four.